Hello, my name is Dr. Logan Schneider. I am pleased to summarize results from a real world study of people with idiopathic hypersomnia called ARISE. Idiopathic hypersomnia is a neurologic sleep disorder characterized by excessive daytime sleepiness, severe sleep inertia, long unrefreshing naps, cognitive impairment, and prolonged nighttime sleep in many patients. The symptom burden in patients with idiopathic hypersomnia is poorly understood, and little is known about the effectiveness of off-label treatments. ARISE was a cross-sectional, internet-based survey study using multiple patient-reported outcome measures related to idiopathic hypersomnia. Participants were adults who had a current diagnosis of idiopathic hypersomnia for at least six months. Data for all participants and subgroups with or without long sleep time were summarized. 75 individuals completed the survey. Participants' mean age was 34 years and most were female. The mean 24-hour sleep duration was 12 hours. About half of participants had long sleep time. 44% had a concurrent psychiatric disorder, most commonly anxiety. 89% of all participants were taking medications to manage their symptoms. The most common were stimulants, wake-promoting agents, and antidepressants. On the Epworth sleepiness scale, the mean score for all participants was 15 out of a range of 0 to 24, where higher scores indicate greater sleepiness. On the idiopathic hypersomnia severity scale, the mean score was 35 out of a range of 0 to 50, where higher scores indicated greater severity of symptoms. Nearly all participants scored greater than 22, the cutoff between untreated idiopathic hypersomnia and controls. These scores indicate a high symptom burden that is not effectively treated, despite nearly 90% of participants taking treatments at that time. ARISE participants reported excessive daytime sleepiness, brain fog, and sleep inertia as the symptoms that were the most difficult to treat. The mean global satisfaction score on the treatment satisfaction questionnaire for medication was 62 out of a possible 100. This is lower than that reported by people in a TSQM validation study who rated their health as poor or their illness as severe. 93% of all participants also used other non-pharmaceutical measures to manage their symptoms. The most common were caffeine, planned naps, and individual accommodations. In conclusion, despite taking off-label medications and using other measures to manage their symptoms, people with idiopathic hypersomnia in the ARISE study reported a significant burden of disease that warrants effective treatment. These real-world findings provide valuable insight into the unique characteristics and unmet treatment needs of people with idiopathic hypersomnia.